another example in the showing of uh, discriminant. So in this case, right, I'm supposed to show that this equation doesn't have roots. So doesn't have roots means uh, no roots. So your job is to show that the discriminant can be negative. So your job is to show that the discriminant can be negative. So in this case, we do not need to do a simultaneous equation. You just need to explore the ABC in the quadratic equation given. So hopefully you can see the quadratic easily. So this is the A and this is the B. Okay, if you want to expand out the B, that's fine. And this is the C. So your job is to show that the discriminant is negative. Do not start with discriminant being negative first. Let's explore the expression. So if you explore the expression, you realize that you need to expand out. So expand out two times two times four. Minus eight k square. So again, you're getting a quadratic expression. So you are getting a quadratic expression for your discriminant. Similar to the previous question, you got to do a complete square. This time around, the complete square is a bit more complex. So your, you got to ensure that your complete square has no callus. If you take a long time or for completing square like this, or you tend to make careless mistake, you realize that it's just it will hinder your explanation and you will get yourself very confused. So this is how my discriminant looks like. So same as the previous question, I'm going to target the squaring. So the squaring will always be positive. So I'm going to multiply a minus 4 on both sides. When you multiply by a minus 4 on both sides, you are still getting a 0, but the sign will be reversed. After the minus 4, you introduce a minus 8 on both sides. So we are trying to deduce the value of the discriminant. We couldn't tell. So we got to deduce the, the, the discriminant. So from here, you will be able to get the discriminant to be this. So the implication will be the discriminant is minus eight or less, meaning you will end up to be always negative. And because it's always negative, you've got no root. So you can do it this way. Or else, right, you can make use of the co concept of complete square. So another way will be similar. You still need the complete square. So every time you complete square, you're actually finding the minimum or maximum value for y. But this time around, your complete square is for the discriminant. So the complete square is for the discriminant. So this minus 8 is the maximum value of the discriminant. 
So the maximum value of the discriminant is minus eight. Therefore, it is always negative. Therefore, it is always minus eight or less. So the same logic will follow. So if you complete square for the discriminant, you are getting the maximum or minimum for the discriminant. So if you complete square for y, you are getting the minimum or maximum value for y. So that depends on who you complete square for. So in our case, right, we are completing square for the discriminant. So you might want, if you feel more comfortable with this logic, you can use it or you can do this, this kind of explanation.